We now introduce one of the most important uh, multimedia content analysis problems in the last few decades, that is face recognition. In early years, around uh, in the end of 1970, uh, researchers start to study the face recognition problem. At that time, uh, the face recognition uh, is was conducted based on measuring the similarity between uh, the, between the eyes, between nose, or between mouths. And at that time, uh, based on such visual appearance-based method, uh, we don't, we are not able to, we were not able to develop a system that can accurately recognize a face image until the paper uh, Icon Face was published. Therefore, we will introduce the eigen face approach in the following. Uh, this very important paper was published in 1991 and in uh, CVPR. The, uh, the, the authors are Matthew Took and Alex Pentland. And now these two researchers are very, 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 very famous in uh, the computer vision field. And this paper is entitled Face Recognition Using Icon Face. And uh, uh, starting from this paper, we finally can uh, be able, we, we finally can develop a system that achieves sat satisfactory uh, recognition performance. So the goal of this paper is to develop a computational model of face recognition, which is fast, simple, and accurate in constrained environment. So now we still focus on uh, the face image capture in a constrained environment rather than in the wild. That means uh, we don't we, we are not able to handle uh, the, the face image with various posts or various uh, luminous change. And uh, in this paper, they try to transform the face image into icon face. And this is the most important breakthrough and the most important thing different from uh, previous works, which are principal components of training uh, images. So we will introduce this idea later. So the so-called icon face are actually principal components of, tr uh, of training images. And then they project a new image into the subspace spanned by the icon face and then classify the face by comparing its position in the face space with that of known individuals. So the idea is we will construct a feature space and uh, in this feature space, uh, the feature space is spanned by the icon face. Therefore, you can, if you take, uh, of course, you take a linear algebra before, a uh, space can be spanned by basis vectors. And in this case, the basis vectors are eigenface, eigenface number one, eigenface number two, and so on. And the, the span space is called uh, the face space. After that, we can project each face image into this space. For example, this one, this one, this one. Okay, and then given a new images, we still can map this image into this space. And then how can we recognize it? How can we recognize the face? We just compare the distance. We just compare uh, the, this point with others. And then we may just uh, take the nearest neighbor. For, in, for example, nearest neighbor is uh, user A. Then we say that uh, the new image is also user A. So this is the uh, idea, basic idea of icon face. Then we will go into the details later. So the concept of icon face is we try to capture the vari variation in the collection of face images. So we will prepare a set of training data. Okay, and these training data are all face images. And we try to buy mathematical uh, mathematical tool. We try to capture the variance 
of these face images. And mathematically, uh, this can be mapped to find the principal components of the distribution of face. Or we should find the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of the set of face images. So first, we will need to calculate the covariance matrix of the training face images. And the covariance, uh, covariance matrix uh, describes how different uh, position will change or vary together. Okay, and then from the covariance matrix, we will find the eigenvector of this matrix to capture the most important variation. So the eigenvectors characterize variation between phases, and each training phase image can then be represented in terms of the linear combination of eigenphases. That is actually equal to we map the training each phase, uh, each training phase image into the phase space. Okay, for example, this point. And then we can, how can we represent this point? As we learn in linear algebra, each vector in the space can be a linear combination of the basis vectors. Like, uh, for example, uh, in this, this may be the vector 4, 1, 3, 6. Then how can we represent it? Actually, we use 4 times 1, 0, 0, 0. This is the first basis plus 1 times 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, plus 3 times 0, 0, 1, 0, plus 6 times 0, 0, 0, 1. And all these are basis vectors. And in the phase space, the basis vectors are actually eigenphase, actually eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. So the numbers of eigenphase is equal to the numbers of training phase images. This is due to the mathematical constraint. As we say, as we know before, when we uh, calculate the eigenvector of, a, of an n by n matrix, how many eigenvalues and eigenvectors we can get? Actually, we can get n eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Therefore, the numbers of eigenphase is equal to the numbers of training phase images. Okay, if we have capital N training images, we will construct an N by N covariance matrix, and therefore we can get N eigenvalue and eigenvectors. But we may not necessarily use all these N eigenvectors. We can find good approximation. That is, those have the largest eigenvalues account for the most variance within training set. Therefore, we don't use all these n eigenvalues. We usually just use the top, uh, maybe the top 20 of the top 10 eigenvectors that have the top 10 uh, largest eigenvalues. A sinusoid, a sinusoid of very frequency and the phase are the basis function of the Fourier decomposition. This has been introduced before. Eigenphase are the basis vector of the eigenphase decomposition. So the idea is are all the same, just as the same as the uh, we have learned in linear algebra. So the vector one, two, three can be described as a linear combination of one. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and a 0, 0, 1. Okay. And uh, in Fourier transform, we use uh, the complex uh, basics vector to do the decomposition. And right now, we use the eigenvector to do the decomposition. And before this work, actually, some researchers have found very interesting and a very important uh, characteristic. These two researchers argue that a collection of face image can be approximately reconstructed by storing a small collection of weights for each face and a small set of standard pictures. 
That is, if we right now, if we have ten students in in my in the class, and then each face image can be actually represent as a linear combination by the average face. Okay, for example, the user, uh, the student, student A, student A's face can be reconstructed based on the average face plus. Uh, uh, plus the user uh, student B with some weighting plus student C with some weighting that is we can combine your face by other face okay and then when we try to recognize a face we can we, we don't directly compare two face images we actually compare the feature weights needed to reconstruct it Okay, with the weights associated with known individual. Therefore, uh, student A may be represent as one times user uh, student B and a 0 0.5 times uh, student C and so on. And if another face is also uh, can be decomposed by uh, one times student B and a 0 0.5 times student C, then we will say that these two face image would be very similar. Therefore, the, this very important idea is that we don't directly compare the uh, face image. We actually transform them into the face space, and then we compare in terms of the feature weights, in terms of the weights of basis vector. This is the most essential idea. These are the steps. Uh, of face, re face recognition using eigenface. So initially, we will acquire uh, the training set of face images and calculate the eigenface, which define the face space. These are the steps to do face recognition using eigenface. So initially, we will acquire a training set of face images and then calculate the eigenface, which constitute the face space and then given a, a, a query uh, image we will map we will transform this image into the face space and then represent uh, this uh, given face image as a linear combination of the M eigen faces therefore we can transform a given images into a vector and this vector store the weight of uh, different icon faces and then we can determine if the image is a face at all by checking to see if the image is sufficiently close to the face space if the given image is not really a face image then the transform vectors should be uh, far from all other uh, vectors in the face space okay and then if it is a face, we will classify the weight pattern as either a known person or, or as unknown. If the nearest neighbor of the uh, transform vector uh, is a known individual, then we will classify uh, this uh, test face image as this user. But if it's, it is not uh, so close, but a little bit, close then we may think it is an unknown face if the same unknown face is seen several times then we will see that okay we miss the training data of this unknown face therefore we will calculate its characteristic weight pattern and incorporate into the known faces that is uh, a pro procedure to do learning to recognition and the final step is an optional step. So the first step, when we are given the training data, we need to calculate the icon face. So how can we do that? They let a face image I, X, Y be a two-dimensional N by N array of intensity value or a vector of dimensional uh, N square. Then uh, if we just take the uh, intensity value of a given image and it's an n by n image then we can transform it into an n square dimension uh, uh, intensity vector 
we will we will um, um, construct the covariance matrix based on this n square dimensional intensity vector. And the most important mathematical foundation of eigenphase is PCA, uh, principal component analysis. We try to find the vectors which best account for the distribution of phase images within the entire uh, uh, image space. So the vectors define the subspace are co uh, uh, the subspace and this subspace called phase space. And these vectors are eigenvectors of the covariance matrix corresponding to the original phase images. So this is the uh, detailed procedure that T1, T2 to Tm be the training phase images. The first step is we calculate the average phase. That is quite simple. So we assume the resolution of all these training images are the same. So we can directly uh, sum all of them and then take the average. So this is the average phase side, average phase side. And then each phase differ from the average is calculated. So phi i is equal to ti minus psi. Okay, we do such subtraction because we we just only we we tr uh, we, we we want to capture the difference, the variation of the difference uh, from the average phase. Okay, then we find a set of m also normal vectors u n and their associated eigenvalues, lambda k, which best describe the distribution of the data. Okay, so we will find um, also normal vectors un. And uh, actually, these also normal vectors un are eigenvectors, which, each of which has a corresponding eigenvalue. Okay, and uh, which m also normal vectors are pick that is the eigenvectors with the largest uh, eigenvalues will be picked. The procedure is that we construct the covariance matrix first. Okay, the covariance matrix can be described like this. So phi n is actually, you still remember, this is the difference between the uh, original phase image uh, and uh, the average phase, right? And then we just multiply uh, the difference vector by its transpose and construct a matrix. So assume that uh, each phi n actually phi n when we when we uh, use the column major phi n is actually an n square dimensional vector. And then when we multiply phi n and the phi n transpose that is um, um, n square by one match vector times one by n square vector and then it will generate an n square by n square matrix okay and this is uh, the covariance matrix so the matrix c is n square by n square and uh, determining n square eigenvectors and eigenvalue is an intractable task. So theoretically, we can directly estimate, we can directly calculate the uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector based on this covariance matrix. However, it would be very computational expensive. Therefore, in this paper, they try to simplify the calculation. Although the basic idea is still uh, finding the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of the n square by n square covariance matrix. So how can we simplify? If the numbers of data points in the feature space is less than the dimension of the space, there will be only n minus 1 rather than n meaningful eigenvector. So this is a, a mathematical uh, foundation. Okay, if the numbers of data point is less than n square, then we only we will only have uh, theoretically we will only have m minus one meaningful eigenvector. 
So we may uh, put a lot of effort to uh, calculate n square eigenvalue and eigenvector, but most of them are not necessary, are not meaningful. Okay. Um, yeah. So all the remaining eigenvector other than this n minus one, all the remaining eigenvectors will have associated eigenvalues uh, equal to zero. That's meaning. That is not meaningful. Okay, so we can determine the eigenvectors by first solving a much smaller m by m matrix, and then take linear combination of the face images phi i. Because m is much much less than n square, so when we calculate the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of the m by m matrix, that is uh, much much more computational efficient. So how can we just calculate uh, the m by m matrix? Let's consider the eigenvalue, eigenvectors vi of a transpose a. A transpose a is actually the covariance matrix. Okay. So assume we have already determined the eigenvector vi. We want to derive uh, a formula that can be used to do simpli uh, simplification. Okay. Uh, so um uh, based on the uh, formula of eigenvalue and eigenvector a transpose a is the original eigen uh, original covariance matrix vi is eigenvector mu i is the eigenvalue vi is the eigenvector so remember that uh when we learn linear algebra a x equal lambda x we say that lambda is the eigenvalue of A, and X is the eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. So this is all the, the same thing. Right now, the matrix is A transpose A, and the VI is the eigenvector. Mu I is the eigenvalue, okay? And then we can pre-multiply in both sides by A. We get such equation, for which we see that A, V, I, are actually the eigenvectors of A A transpose. So here we can see that uh, we can see this is a matrix. A V I can be viewed as an eigenvector. So here A V I is an eigenvector, and then U I is the eigenvalue. Okay. The most important thing is we can construct the m by m matrix that is equal to a transpose A, A transpose A, where uh, the matrix is phi M transpose phi N, and the phi the M eigenvectors VL of L. Okay, so we can transform the original problem into this one. Okay, into this one. This, I, this vectors determine linear combination of the M uh, training set of face image to form the eigen faces U, UL. Then the relationship, the relationship between V and the, the desired eigen uh, ve vector U is here. So we can combine, we can combine V by the uh, by phi K. And then we can get the UL. Okay, so you can see here the AVI is equal to um, phi one, phi two to phi m, and then v one, uh, vi vi one, vi two to vi m, and then we can linearly combine them to get AVI. And AVI uh, is actually the eigenvector of uh, this matrix A A transpose. By this method, we can largely reduce the computation from the order of the numbers of pixels uh, in the image n, n square to the order of the numbers of images in the training set M. So originally, we uh, find the eigen va values and eigenvectors from n square by n square matrix, and right now we just need to calculate 
the eigenvector and eigenvalue from m by m matrix. And then from this m eigenvector, we can do linear combination uh, to obtain the eigenvector of n squared by n squared matrix. And the associated eigenvalues allows us to rank the eigenvectors according to their usefulness in, character, in characterizing the variation among the images. So by this way, we can largely reduce the computation. Here we show some example. Uh, given a face database, so right now we have 10 different faces. And then we can uh, calculate the mean face or the average face. So this is the uh, this is the sign, okay, the sign uh, we mentioned above. And uh, by the procedure we mentioned above, we can calculate the eigen uh, vectors of the covariance matrix of the training data. And then here, uh, this is the first eigen face or the first eigen vector. And this eigen face corresponding to the largest uh, eigenvalue and this is the second icon face this is the third and so on and you may imagine that you may see that okay this looks quite look like a, a face but uh, it looks a little bit weird uh, this is because uh, actually these are not really face no this is these are not really face these are eigenvectors and because in eigenvectors we have some value positive and we have some value negative and then we may show the positive value um, larger value as higher intensity and the smaller value as low intensity and we map the eigenvectors into uh, from 0 to uh, uh, 255 and uh, we just um, visualize the intensity value of the eigenvector and because the eigenvector uh, the dimension of the eigenvector is n square so we can uh, just put it the old values like the original uh, face so we see uh, the eigenvector like this and because this uh, look like quite like a, a face so we name it uh, the name as eigenface okay but mathematically Actually, these eigenfaces are all eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of the training data. Okay. And uh, based on the eigenface, we can decompose an original image by the average face plus uh, the comp linear combination of the eigenfaces. Like this example, given this face image, we can decompose it as an average face uh, minus uh, 2000 times uh, the first icon face and then plus uh, six, 600 times the second icon face and so on okay and then we can uh, well reconstruct the original face image by the combination of the average face and the old icon face okay but how if we just consider some of this icon face okay here are the example when we just consider the average face and the, the first icon face we just do these two combination then we can reconstruct the face like this if we reconstruct based on more icon face we reconstruct like this with more icon face we re reconstruct like this and with more and more icon face we can more accurately reconstruct the original face like here we can see um, this face uh, is a little bit similar to the original face and if we consider more like uh, we consider uh, one, uh, the, the one two three four five six seven uh, six seven eight if we consider eight icon face then we can construct the face very similar to the original one and if we consider all the icon face, we can very accurately uh, reconstruct the original face. And the weight, uh, minus 2,000, uh, 600, 300, can be used to describe 
uh, the characteristic of this face image. Mathematically, the procedure is that this. The eigenphase span an m prime dimensional subspace of the original n square image space. And uh, the significant eigenvectors are chosen as those with the largest associate eigenvalue. This idea has been in, uh, described many, many times. And when the new face image T comes, we project it into the face space by finding the vectors corresponding to different eigen uh, vectors. The idea is uh, we subtract the original phase T by the mean by the average phase and then we calculate the inner product of this subtraction with the uh, the inner product with the uh, 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 eigen vector okay K eigen vector then we can get the K weight okay uh, why do we do the uh, inner product because this uh, formula this formula is coming from uh, linear algebra okay when we try to find the projection u on a then we do inner product and then take absolute value and then divide it by the norm of the uh, vector a and right now because the all the eigen vectors are uh, uniform they are uniform vector uh, un they are univector, okay? So their norm are, is always equal to one. Therefore, we just take the inner product between the uh, the, the 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 difference vector with the eigenvector, and then uh, the the weight corresponding to m prime eigenvectors are collected to form a vector and uh, represent the original phase image T, okay? This vector can be used to describe the con contribution of each eigenface. And then based on such vector, omega, we find a phase class K that minimizes the Euclidean distance. Uh, the Euclidean distance between, uh, for example, right now, the new image T is mapped to this point, And then we just find its uh, nearest neighbor and uh, check whether the omega uh, which class the omega k belongs to. For example, this may be the face image of, of Peter. Then we will recognize the given image as Peter. Okay. Uh, so a face is classified as belonging to class k when the minima epsilon k is below some threshold. So therefore, we um, in addition to find the uh, nearest neighbor, we also uh, calculate the distance between the map value and uh, the, the, the closest neighbor. Okay, If the distance is below than some threshold, then we say that, okay, this given face image uh, is Peter. Otherwise, we will say this face is classified as unknown. If, for example, some data point that is far from others, then we will say that it's in unknown. The, pro the process mentioned above are all the procedures to using uh, eigenphase uh, in, rec in uh, face recognition. And uh, actually, eigenphase can also be used to detect face. Okay, so uh, in the previous uh, process, we assume the given image is uh, a face image. But how about in a very large image and the, the face just appear in part of the image? Okay, we can also use the icon face to detect face. So the idea is at every location in the image, we can calculate the distance between the lo local sub image and the uh, uh, face space. And uh, the distance is measure of faceness. And the result of calculating the distance at every point forms a face map. So you can imagine that given uh, uh, given an image I, that is quite large, and uh, the face only appear at some place. And we can use a sliding window, for example, this sliding window, and check this sub-image, the distance between this sub-image, and uh, uh, we map the sub-image into the face space. And to check whether this sub-image is similar to 
uh, some uh, some known individual. Okay, and then we can use the distance between uh, between the projected vector and the, the known individual as the phase this. Okay, and then we move the sliding window and do the same thing again and move the sliding window and do the same thing again. And theoretically, uh, we get a uh, high distance uh, for the sub images, not including face. However, when the sliding window moves to this place, we will have a short distance between this sub image to known individual. Okay, so this is why we can use icon face to detect uh, face, to do face detection in a big image. So finally, we revisit the face space and uh, talk about the property of the face space. An image of a face should lie near the face space. So there are four possibilities. When we are given any image, there are four positivity, four positivity to the face space. The first case is the near face space and the near a face class, just like K just like the, uh, the, the the case one, okay. Uh, when we project the given image to the face space, then uh, it may project to this uh, the point the point one, okay, the point one, and then we may find some near this neighbor uh, that is also a known individual. Then we can classify, uh, we can classify the uh, image. Uh, number one as omega one okay so an individual is recognized and identified another case is near face space but not near a known face class that is case two when we project the given image to the face space it may belong to the face space but it is not close to any known individual that means an unknown individual is present so as we say before, when we found there are many times the unknown individual is wrong here, then we may uh, we may uh, add this unknown individual in the training data. Okay. The third case is distant from face space and not near a known uh, face class. Okay. The fourth case is the distance from face space but near a known face class. So this is uh, case number four here, and this is case number three here. Okay, so the case number four here is the uh, distance from face space. That means the given image is actually not a face image. And uh, it is uh, uh, the appearance of this image is not similar to face. Okay. In the case number three, case number three is actually not a face image, but uh, for some reason, it looks a little bit like a face. Okay, for example, uh, they have visual appearance uh, very similar to eyes. Okay, and maybe very similar to a nose and so on. And may we may uh, sometimes we may misclassify this into a face image okay so uh, according to the face space we can describe we can discuss uh, all the possibilities of a given image to the face space